You are listening now to A Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. Hello, my dear listeners, may God bless all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. We have been speaking about the rich, the rich in faith. And now, I want you to understand one thing, especially you that find yourself poor. You who find yourself poor, poor, whether you have no money, whether you are poor in your family, whatever is your poverty, whatever is your poverty. If you are poor and you believe and think that God is unjust with you, you need to understand that the word, the word that the disciples asked Jesus when they saw the poor blind man along the way, they asked Jesus, Jesus, who sinned, him or his parents for him to be born blind? And Jesus said, neither him or his parents sinned. So, people think they actually impose their faults or they impose their bitterness in life, their problem in God. When God has nothing to do with the poverty. To the contrary. To the contrary. Because God, when He sees the poor, He sees the poor as a rich. Because He he chose God, he has been choosing the poor of this world to become rich in faith. And when we talk about rich in faith, it means that the person can do all things. Because a person rich in faith, they get health, they get family, they get marriage, they are blessed in their love life, they are financially blessed. They are blessed in all the areas of their life because they are rich in faith. Rich in faith. The greatest glory, the greatest glory that we have from God is faith. Faith is a, it's like a mark. It's the mark or the trademark of those who are blessed by God, who are chosen by God. You know, just see the scripture of Jesus' brother, James. James was Jesus' brother. And he said, Has God not chosen the poor of this world? Has God not chosen the poor? And he's, he's not saying here the poor on, on spirit. He's choosing poor of this world. Poor is poor. Poor has no life. Poor has no right to a, a, a life of dignity, because poor is poor. So God has chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith. And not only rich in faith, but also to be the heirs of the kingdom of God. So God has chosen you, my dear listener. You that find yourself poor, in order to make you to be rich, to be rich in faith, so that through the richness of this faith, the richness of faith is the richness of God's Spirit, is the richness of God's power, and this richness, so that you can conquer, so that you can conquer, it's not because you are rich in faith that the blessings, God's blessings, will happen automatically. Not because we are rich in faith that we are going to reach everything that God promised just basing on just praises and worship. No. In the name of Jesus, you who are listening to me right now and you find yourself in this situation of poverty, know this, God has chosen you. 
God has chosen you. And what God has chosen, He didn't choose the rich. He chose the poor in order for them to be rich. And to be rich in what position? In faith. Not to be rich only with money. Because to, reach, to be rich in money, it does not guarantee a happy family. It does not guarantee a blessed marriage. It does not guarantee good health. It does not guarantee victories in your sentimental life. Richness, rich in your material life, does not guarantee a spiritual life. But the richness in faith that God is here promoting is to conquer everything we want. And Jesus said that everything is possible to he who has faith. And faith he has been giving to those that are poor of this world. So God has chosen, he has chosen you who are poor to become rich, to become rich. So, you already have this richness in you. It is inside of you, but you must make use of it. If you do not use it, I wish I could have the, it's like the, the, the richness in faith is like a, a blank check. You must fill it out and then go and check it in and charge and, and put that, that check in the bank in order to get that amount. So, you who are listening to me right now, you need to remove, you need to let go from your head, let go of your mind, those foolish ideas that unfortunately are the ideas that comes from hell. You were born to be poor, you are going to die poor. They say, wood that is bent remains bent. You were born poor, you're going to die poor. My grandparents were poor, so I am poor. So all this is the poverty in faith. And that's worse. That's horrible. When you have a poor faith, you move nowhere. You have no desire to go nowhere. It's like a person who is depressed. A depressed person is that kind of person that wants to be in darkness. They like to be in darkness. They like to be by themselves. And that's darkness. Because they are poor, they are miserable in their faith, and they have no certainty of nothing, they have no hope. But when a person is rich in faith, they, they fight, they strive, they conquer what they want, they pursue what they don't have yet, but they believe that they can conquer. They believe in the God of the impossible. They believe in the God that blessed Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and they believe in this God. So then they conquer what they are determining inside of them. It's not because they heard the, the, the words of someone, a positive word, or make a course of this or course of that nature. No, the person that is rich in faith, they are inserted of the conviction of God's Spirit. The, a person who is rich in faith, they have the spirit of faith, which is God's Spirit. And that's why nothing is impossible to them. But the poverty of faith makes a person to be in depression. They can have the sum of money that they have, but they're going to be poor in faith. And God, in His glorious and majesty wisdom, an endless wisdom, He chose the poor of the world to be rich in faith. To be rich in faith. Because with the richness of faith, my friend, everything changes. It was like, is the cases of the testimonies we are hearing. They became free from depression because they came to know the Word of God. Because God's Word is what brings faith. The Word of God, the Holy Scriptures, is what makes the faith to be enriched. 
So whoever wants faith, whoever wants the richness of faith to resolve their problems, they must read the Bible. So my friend, you that are listening to us right now, you are poor. God has chosen you that are poor. Because it is written, God has chosen God has chosen, has God, has God not chosen the poor of faith, poor of this world, not only to be rich in faith, but to be also heirs of the kingdom of God. And this only comes to your life when you receive the Holy Spirit, because when you receive the Holy Spirit, you are strong in faith. And put it to practice. Seek, go after it, and you are going to become rich in faith, but you are going to be the heir of God's kingdom. Thanks be to God. I know that your eyes are always watching over me. And your ears are always eager to hear my prayer, even if I may cry. I know that you are by my side When you are near me I'm never lonely Just as promised You never change God of Abraham God of promise, you swore by yourself to change my life. I know your word is true, for this I trust in you. Lord, make your words be real in me. I know that you're right. Are always watching over me And your ears Are always eager to hear my prayer Even if I may cry I know
You know, I noticed I had problems when I was a teenager. So I got addicted to, to medications. And I found that it would help numb my mind or something. And whenever I ran out of the meds, even if I wasn't in pain, sometimes I would go to the doctor and say, I'm in pain from the surgery I had. Can I have some medication? I also tried illegal drugs as a teenager. Marijuana was the favorite one that I used. And alcohol. When I'm drunk or high, I wouldn't remember what I said. Many times, um, people would tell me stuff. I didn't remember doing it. Then I was divorced, and at that time, when I was separated from my wife, I realized my life is bad. It's like, I didn't think my life could get any worse. Split over my, homosexual, my homosexuality, because I had cheated on her with a guy. Then she felt rotten, and I felt even, I felt even worse. But I would, go on, uh, I would go online because the internet became available then and I would look at gay porn. I had many addictions. I didn't realize sex with men was one of addiction because it grew into a big addiction. Many times I would have sex with more than one guy a day. But in my 30s and 40s it got worse. Right? But I, my daughter would see me bring home a different guy many times. The day that I phoned the church I texted my daughter and I said I'm going to church. And she said, I'm going to come with you. And she came. And I didn't remember a church service, but I remember afterwards talking to the pastor. After that, I didn't. I, I got rid of everything. And I didn't touch the drugs. But in my head, I thought, I'm powerless. Because desires sometimes were so strong. But I saw also at these services, other people fighting and giving their testimony. I realized I had peace. I never had peace in my life before. I never experienced that in my life. The desires in my life changed and my mind changed, my thoughts changed. When I came to this church, I just said, I have to, I have to, my life has to change. And thank God it did. Take 
Voices when I was 20 years old is something I didn't ask for nor did I expect. It just came upon me like that basically. I couldn't control them, they took over my whole life. So it got to a point where I was on lots of medication and the schizophrenia, the voices in my head would control my life. I got to a point where I couldn't leave and put my head down to rest or close my eyes without basically screaming because the voices in my head were taking control um, of everything. Because the voices were so bad and they wouldn't stop, um, I started drinking alcohol and this became a very severe problem at the time and I would even start drinking in the, in the afternoon as early as four o'clock in the afternoon and I'd start drinking at home on my own just to drown the voices out. And this became a daily routine with me. I would drink, I'd go to the off-license, buy the cheapest wine, beer, cigarettes, stay at home and just drink by myself just to block these voices out. I tried everything to stop these voices, down to medication, herbal med medication, acupuncture, and even went to witch doctors to stop the voices in my head, but nothing worked. Everything just seemed impossible for me. And I thought I would be living in this hell basically the rest of my life. I received a city newspaper and when I read it I was quite inspired by the testimonies in there and the timetable so I made an appointment and came down to visit one of the advisors there. It was then my life started to change. So coming to the church um, I listened to the pastor and the assistants and what they told me to do I did it. I wanted to be free and I believed, I believed that I would be free if I, if I made a chain of prayer. And basically, if I just used my faith, it was impossible for these voices to go because it was impossible for me to ever, to ever get rid of these voices. I thought, I have, if I do this and use my faith, they will go. God has to do something, and he did. Today, I'm free. I'm not addicted to alcohol. I don't have to take medication and above all, I do not hear any voices inside me. Today I'm a different person, I'm happy, no longer depressed. I'm also able to advise others as I'm an assistant in the church. Um, I am just so pleased that God has helped me, my faith has helped me. And if it helped me, it can help you. <laughs> faith and intelligence go together. Although faith sounds crazy to this world, it's intelligent because it makes us know that we can be happy. Faith also keeps us from accepting a life of defeat and allows us to fight to conquer a life of victory and success. If nothing is going according to plan, it's time for you to use your intelligence and faith to bring to existence the desires of your heart. The Universal Church, a place of faith to change your life.
my life was completely destroyed before. My mother used to have a headache dealing with me because I would do bad in school. I would always get in trouble. The teachers, the principal would always call my mother and I was just doing really bad. My life was this way because I never truly had happiness and my dad wasn't really around much. So it was just my mother, she would just work um, to try to provide, but as far as spending quality time, we didn't have much of that. I was a very angry person and I used to take it out on anybody I saw. I used to fight random people in the street. I just wanted to feel numb, so I used to smoke a lot as well. I would smoke to numb the pain, I would smoke to just get away from these feelings that I had of being alone. I would be with people from my neighborhood um, and I lived in the heart of the ghetto. So it was the people who were there who sold drugs. I sold drugs as well, um, the violent, the gang members with the guns, everything. This is the type of life that I, I came to have. My mother didn't raise me this way, but that's what I got involved with. I had to smoke every day. I couldn't go a day without smoking. Even before school, I would go to school high. I had a boyfriend and um, I found out he had given me a sexually transmitted disease. And that's when I hit rock bottom. That's when I felt like everything was just going out of control. So I had went to a clinic and I went there to get um, the, a cure for the, for the STD, and I, I was just there in the, in the clinic room wondering what my life had become. I had an older brother who came to the church, and he would drag me to come along with him. I looked back, and I couldn't tell who I had became. So this is when I realized that I needed to change. I didn't know how, but I, I wanted to change. I wanted to do better. I wanted to get back on the right track. When I stopped suffering, it felt like nothing I ever felt before. I felt like the burden was gone completely. And I felt way better. After time, um, I stopped smoking. I no longer had the craving to smoke. I no longer had the desire that was gone. Talking to different guys, this was the next thing that changed because I felt like now there was love. Now I knew God and now I knew the love of God. Now I'm a completely different person. The wrong things, the problems that I was going through, they're gone with the addictions, with the um, being violent. I no longer hang out with these wrong friends. And if I had to tell anybody advice, if I, anybody who's going through my situation or something similar, what I would tell them is look to God. Despite what you heard about churches, despite what you heard about God, if anybody told you God's not real, I'm telling you God is real. And look to him, look to him because he can help you. He could change you. He could get you out of any problem, out of anything you're going through. Now that I've 
seen the pearl And I will not rest I cannot be content Till at last it is mine Forever to shine The kingdom of God The pearl Let me gather Life was dead. It was destroyed. Um, I had a lot of suicidal thoughts and behavior. I used to cut myself. I tried to commit suicide many times by cutting my wrists. Um, I was even hospitalized because I took too much um, over-the-counter medication in hopes to kill myself. I felt lost. Um, I was feeling like nobody cared about me, um, depressed a lot of anxiety, uh, like I couldn't get out of the rut that I was in. I was feeling um, like suicide was my best option to get away from the pain I was feeling, to get away from the situation that just wouldn't change, um, to get away from myself uh, crying every day, um, just feeling destruction everywhere. I learned about the Universal Church um, through a co-worker. Um, she, her family is involved in the church. They are assistants in the church, and she kept bringing newspapers. And I kept reading it. Um, every week she brought one, and I would read them. And I knew that I needed to, to find this church and, and attend, because the testimonies that I was reading in the newspaper was very similar to how I was feeling. And I, I thought that I can seek help here. When I came, I submit myself to God. I said to myself that, you know, if I didn't fully commit, then I knew that I was going to be dead. I opened my heart to the Lord. I started making chains of prayer on Mondays, on Wednesdays, on Thursdays, on Fridays, and Sunday. Um, I did that for months. And I started, little by little, every day I started to see a change in myself. I didn't think about killing myself as often. I didn't um, cry as much as I did before. I had a better relationship with my children because I didn't feel frustrated as much. Um, I really received that peace and rest that I kept praying for. Um, I don't think about cutting myself anymore. Um, I have self-esteem that I didn't have before. I have the strength that I never knew that I, I had before. I feel strong that I can make it through each problem that comes across my way. I have the assurance within me that the Lord will strengthen me. He is strengthening me. He is providing for me and I can make it, you know, I can make, I can conquer whatever comes my way without resorting to depression and, and feeling sad about everything and crying and, and all the things that I used to do before. I pray more, I have faith in, in the Lord, and I know that He is answering my prayers. Universal Online Radio, transmitting life 24 hours a day. Before I attended the Universal Church, 
my life was very hectic and I was very stressed, depressed, I was lost, it was like a dry bones, I didn't know what to do, um, it was, um, I was very in pain and Oh, and and and, it, and everything was happening all over the place in in every in every area of my life. Things started to um, to be to go down. Um, I didn't know what to do. I didn't. I was um, I was depressed. I couldn't sleep at night, and I was I was lost. Because, because of my marital problem, I became uh, a compulsive shopper. I would spend for no reason. I would buy anything just to feel the loneliness I, I was having. And all these problems as well led me to have uh, an, an, an unstable health. And uh, my spiritual life was down. I was feeling depressed stress and I was I was unable to sleep at night and um, problems was, were coming everywhere and I wanted a change I wanted to I wanted I wanted to change and I didn't know what to do I, I, I felt like a dry bone one day um, I'm, I, I was having a discussion with my friend and then um, and I was explaining to her um, how much problem I was having and and at that time she told me she knows she knows a church she goes to a church and she would love for me to attend and 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 from that point I should be able to find the piece that I was looking for on that Friday night when I attend the service I receive help um, and that same night, I, I, I felt like a, a, a load came off my back. I felt relief. I felt at peace. I felt, I felt really good. And I know that this is what I was looking for. This is what I wanted. And I learned how to make chains of prayer. I, since then, I've been attending church almost four times a week. Every time, every every prayers, every request I made, I I I I I get results. I I I find results. Today I'm 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 more at peace. I'm more focused. I know what I want, and I'm not depressed anymore. I'm I'm very happy. Come close and hear my cry. I am in need of you. Come rescue me. Guard my soul, for I am faithful to you. Come close and hear my cry. I am in need of you. Come rescue me. Guard my soul, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant. You my God, teach me, O oh Lord, your ways. Jesus, help me walk in your 
come close. 